Y'all are gonna issue out a warrant for me when y'all couldn't even do the same for my mama. And my mom was literally out on the street selling her body. As y'all can see by the title, I am continuing my series. We're kind of taking a break from my mama situation because at this point in my life, her and I was not talking. If you watched my last story time, I explained to you guys how I had to get a restraining order on her. So I wasn't able to talk to her at all. During this time of me not talking to my mom, I was dealing with a lot of things. In my last video, I explained to you guys how I was feeling and the different stuff that I was dealing with. This video is a continuation to that. So. If you're watching this video and you have not seen my other videos, I'm going to need you to just stop and pause this video so that everything that I'm going to be talking about here on out <laughs> can make sense to you guys. But before we get into the video, y'all already know what to do. Y'all know the drill. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below because you don't want to miss anything that I have to say. And also turn on your post notifications because I always upload Sundays at 3 p.m. But I will be doing some videos in between every now and again. So you want to go ahead and put those on. But because YouTube be fucking up, y'all also need to follow me on all of my social medias. I don't remember where it's gonna be but one of the two all right y'all so last video i told you guys how my doctor told my nurses to follow me home to just be sure that i made it home safely because she wanted me to go to this mental facility to just get checked out and make sure i was okay because she was a little concerned about my weight loss i had lost a lot of pounds uh, i don't remember exactly how much but y'all know after you have have a baby you are gonna lose weight you know obviously but I was breastfeeding as well and I know that didn't help and then I wasn't eating so I lost a lot of weight. I, I look like a crackhead y'all like real talk I look like a fucking crackhead. She was like just go to the um, place and get evaluated get, you know they'll check you out for a couple hours and I just want to be sure everything's okay with you because I'm really really concerned about you. My doctor she has been with me since I was 15 going on 16 whenever I was pregnant with my daughter so to me she felt like family as well because like she had all my babies at that point and she just knew everything about me. Um, I did what she said. Um, once we got home, I told Gabe, you know, the rundown of everything that happened at my doctor's appointment and was like, you know, we gotta pack up everything so that we can head to this place because my doctor wants me to get evaluated. And so he was like, how long was gonna be there? Because one thing about my husband, he does not like to fucking wait. He don't like to wait, he don't give a damn what it is. If it's his appointment, he ain't waiting. So he was trying to figure it out because we also had my baby. He was about three and a half months at this point. We had people to watch him. Like my husband's people would love to watch him, but because he was breastfed and he didn't really take bottles at all, you know, we just always took him everywhere we went. My husband, he packed the baby, whatever, we got in the car and we start to head there. Now this place was like an hour away almost. I had a long way to think about what I was doing and I was just like, I hope this is gonna work. I hope this is gonna help me. I'm just gonna be doing what my doctor asked me to. Um, and mind y'all, it was like maybe five or six-ish at that point as well. So it was getting dark, it was getting late, but we still wanted to get it out the way. We figured if we went late, it wouldn't be as busy. I don't know. I was just in thought and I was just hoping that this would have helped me. I was just hoping that whatever these people were going to do, that they were just going to do it and I was going to get the fuck up out of there so I could be home and have the rest of the day to myself. So y'all, we arrived there. The way that it was set up was we had to actually check into the hospital. They, I guess, had an area where it was specifically for mental patients. It was also another facility, which I did not know until later on, but it was another facility that which was people who were staying overnight, the psych ward. I was in the hospital part at this time. So we get checked in, you know how they do, ask you a bunch of questions, why you're here, what's going on. It's like I'm going to the emergency room in a way, but instead of me going to the emergency the room triage I went to the mental triage or whatever I explained to them my doctor wanted me to come and she wanted me to get checked out because she was a little bit concerned of my weight loss my doctor was only an OB you know she can only do so much so she wanted me to be 
handled by professionals basically they took my information took my blood pressure you know the same old regular shit that they do whenever you go to the hospital and then told me to follow them to the area that they were going to take me into now i didn't know what to expect y'all because the hospital is ghetto anyway that's the same hospital that if y'all remember my last story time or i don't know how many story times ago this is going to be but my story time where um i caught staph infection from getting a tattoo yeah that was that same exact hospital that i went to i'm following the nurse and she's leading me to a room it's like a big square with a bunch of rooms and then you know in the middle you got the nurse area y'all know how the shit usually be right she's leading me into that area and as i'm walking i'm seeing nurses sitting outside of the rooms like every room i see a nurse with a chair outside with a little clipboard in her hand just writing down stuff and just sitting i'm just like what the fuck is this like, what type of weird creepy ass shit is that so i'm just walking still following the lady to my my room and before we can get to the room I hear screaming like it sounds like a little boy I can't put my eyes on this patient because it's he in one of the rooms but I don't know which room and I'm not about to be looking at the room but I could just hear I know it's a little boy I could just hear the little boy just cussing and screaming I don't remember exactly what he was saying but he was going the fuck off do you understand me he was going off and I was like okay this is what I got myself into okay all right let me just you know maybe he just his, his situation is different than mine so you know i ain't got nothing to do with that let me just continue on to follow this lady to this room and do what the fuck i need to do so in my mind after i heard that i'm just like already outdone kind of because i'm just like bruh I did not come here for this, but let me just continue and see what else they got in store for a bitch. We finally got it, made it into the room, and it's just like a regular room with a um, hospital bed. I went to the room first, and then Gabe, they came, got him eventually, and then followed him to the room where I was. So a little bit after I got to the room, another nurse had came in and asked me a bunch of questions, kind of like the same questions the nurse in the front asked me but these questions were a little bit more detailed um kind of in your business type of like so she was asking me why I was there and I explained to her you know what my doctor said and why I was there and everything um she asked me about my family history um, I told her mom kind of suffered with depression and stuff because y'all at this time I don't really know we still don't really know what's going on with my mama but some of the situations my mama was dealing with seemed kind of familiar so I wanted to get checked up because Ain't no way I'm gonna go down that path. Like, I can't. I'm not doing it. Then the nurse asked me about the whole suicidal thought type of thing. She asked me, have you had any suicidal thoughts or have you ever had any? I don't, I want to say she asked me, have you had any suicidal thoughts? And so in my mind, I'm just, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna tell you how I was thinking. I was like, no, I don't have any. This is what, exactly what I told her. I said, no, I don't have any suicidal thoughts right now. But about a couple of years back, I did. I'm like, yeah, I had suicidal thoughts before a couple of years ago, but I don't have any currently. I'm just really, really sad. I don't, you know, want to get up and do anything that I, you know, n normally would do. I just want to sleep and not eat and just be sad as fuck. I don't know. I can't really explain it. The nurse is like, okay, cool. Um, thank you. And she was like, I'll let you guys know what the doctor's gonna do. We'll be back in touch y'all know how they do so they eventually came back and took blood and urine and stuff like that y'all already know how they do at the doctor or the hospital now hours went by at this point and my baby is getting restless like even though i'm there to feed him you know he's not home he's in a total different environment like babies could like feed off of that shit and he was like ready to get the fuck up out of there and he became restless and was whining and everything and so I was just like bro where's these people at what the fuck what's going on and then I became nervous because nobody was saying anything like you know how the nurses will usually check in after a few minutes or, or after like 30 minutes or an hour whatever y'all know at least they check in a couple of times while you're there you know throughout your whole visit they weren't even doing that like after that first session um with the nurse and after they took blood and all of that I didn't see them at all and this was for a long time, like a couple of hours. I became really, really nervous and concerned because that was not normal. We checked in the hospital about 6.30, something like that. Um, so I would say maybe midnight or something like that came 
um, like, yeah, it was that long. All this time had went by, I was like, let me just call my doctor and see if maybe she can call them to figure out what's going on because, like, the bitch told me to go there, so I thought maybe she had some type of power control from afar because I'm the reason, because she was the reason why I was there in the first place. So I called and I, obviously I got the nurse's line or whatever because it was after hours and so she eventually called me back because she wanted an update anyway, so she knew I had, she knew I would have been calling to give her an update regardless because she told me to keep her up to date. So I was like, yeah, I'm here. After she called me, she called me from a private number. Um, and so I answered, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm here. It's been hours and no one is saying anything like I have my baby here he's getting stressed out and you know he's getting restless because he isn't you know comfortable in his own home and I'm ready to get home, go home too I'm getting restless my damn self and my husband is like we just tired like we had a long day and we're just ready to go home so can you like see what's going on so she was like yeah I'll call the hospital I want to see if I can get in touch with someone to see what they're trying to do or whatever so I'm like okay cool hang up the phone maybe about another hour or two passed by and a nurse finally comes in the room this time it was a male nurse and so he was like okay so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna transfer you over to our mental unit and so we're gonna evaluate you and just see how you do and I was like okay evaluate me I thought that's what y'all was doing right then and there but okay but then you're talking about transfer me like what what does all of that mean he was like well I'm not really sure how long they're gonna want to hold you but usually for like regular cases we'll just evaluate you for about 48 hours or so if the doctor feels like you're okay um, then they would just let you go so y'all want me to stay overnight with the nurse and baby and then, like, how, that, how, sir, how am I gonna do that? Like, what, what do you, what do you mean? My, my family isn't really gonna be able to hang. Like, what's going on? And he was like, Oh no, they can't stay. It's gonna be uh, a facility where you, you know, you, it's gonna only be you. It's gonna only be who? Cause it ain't only gonna be me because this bitch is not about to. Like, what do you mean? You mean to tell me I gotta tell my family goodbye and go somewhere else overnight or for a couple of days until y'all decide that I could leave because the doctor told me to come here? No, 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 no. <laughs> he was like, well, this is just what the nurses are ordering. You know, I'm not really in control, so that's. It is what it is, basically. So he left, and so I immediately start panicking. I immediately start freaking out because, bitch, ain't no way I'm about to be somewhere that I've never been overnight. After he left and told me all that, I immediately started to freak out because, in my mind, the first thing that I thought about was a job interview. <laughs> like, this has nothing to do with this story, but I had a job interview, and I. I didn't want to miss it because I was already, you know, excited about the job interview and everything. I mean, the job interview was over the phone, but it's just simple fact that I'm in a fucking hospital. Like, my mind isn't, you know, where it's supposed to be in order to do a job interview. So, I was just like, bruh, this is like the best job ever that I've ever had. You know, I'm currently with them, by the way. But <laughs> this was the best, this is the best job, one of the best jobs I've ever had an opportunity to get and so I wanted that job like I just I could not pass up that opportunity so that in my head just gave me anxiety not only that I'm thinking about how the fuck my baby gonna eat because he won't drink a bottle the only thing he wants is a titty and I'm not gonna be there to give it to him so lastly I'm thinking about I'm gonna be in a facility with someone that I don't know or people that I don't know I've never done anything like this before I literally started having a panic attack so Gabe was like go ahead and call your doctor and see if there's anything that she could do because I don't think they could do that like why would you know why would your doctor want you to stay overnight if she knows what's going on and everything like that I'm like okay you're right let me call her back so I called the nurse's office or the nurse's line again and she eventually called me back and I told her I was like they're trying to make me stay overnight I don't know how long they just saying you know until the doctor feels like I'm okay I have a job interview in a couple of hours because at this point it was past 12 a.m. and I had a job interview that day or whatever like I got a job interview and I don't want to miss it this is one of the biggest opportunities I've ever had job wise or career wise like I really really like I cannot stay you're just like I understand everything that you're saying this is not going to be the last opportunity you really need to take care of yourself and do what they ask you to do because I'm really really worried about you and concerned after she said it in my mind I'm like oh
oh so this bitch is with them she's with them she's against me too so i'm <laughs> as i'm on the phone with her i'm literally like panicking i am fucking panicking because i'm just like this is not this is not happening like this is not fuck this is this is not real life i'm like literally hyperventilating and i just feel this like the urge to throw up and so i tell gabe i think i'm about to throw up so he gives me the trash can i put the trash can under me and so i'm like hanging i'm sitting at the end of the um, hospital bed with my head in the trash can and then i just start throwing up yeah i started throwing up because i couldn't breathe i've never felt that before i've never felt that feeling that i felt at that time ever again and i hope to never feel that ever again because like yo i never had a panic attack in my life i didn't know how to control my emotions i didn't know how to control my throw up like i just words cannot explain the fear that i felt because i was getting ready to I felt like I was being fed to wolves, basically. At this point, um, Gabe ends up calling his sister to come get the baby because um, he knew I was getting ready to leave. Now, once Gabe's sister left for my baby, I felt even shittier because I'm like, not only am I really, really legit about to fucking do this, but how is my baby going to eat? I, I, I don't know how he's going to eat. But that thought alone just caused me to beat myself up about it because I really couldn't believe what the fuck was happening to me to me out of all people i couldn't believe this was happening to me i still to this day i still will never understand why me because it's just i didn't ask to feel like this i didn't ask to go through any type of postpartum depression i've never been through any postpartum depression when i'm already dealing with the shit with my mama and that made it even worse is it because of her did my mama give this to me is is this heretic like is, is this something that you can pass on like we've never dealt with any type of mental condition mental illness in my family until my mom now it's going from my mom to me but the only difference is i'm going to a fucking mental facility when i was trying to do the same for my mama because she legit needed help and you know i felt like i did need help but i really didn't feel like it was necessary for me to be locked up as long as i was and i really didn't like out this whole experience y'all that i'm going to explain to you guys was really traumatizing to me after i kind of calmed down a little bit um gabe ended up asking me he was like can you ask a nurse see what would happen if you leave like they can't make you do nothing you're not killing yourself or anything like that and i was like you're right i don't think they could make me let me just ask so i asked I, you know dial the button or whatever and um a nurse came and i asked the nurse i was like what would happen if i leave and the nurse said these exact fucking words well, if you leave, we're just going to issue out a pink slip on you. So you going to try to arrest me because I'm denying your service. I'm not doing what you want me to do because you feel like I need it. Y'all are going to issue out a warrant for me when y'all couldn't even do the same for my mama. And my mom was literally out on the street selling her body. They was like, you shouldn't have told them that you had suicidal thoughts years ago. And I was like, you're right, you were fucking right. Because even though it was years ago, for some reason that they tagged that along with that right, that moment right then and there, they tagged that along with that and said, hey, this bitch needs further evaluation because she, had suicidal thoughts a couple of years ago and she was honest with us about it but she wasn't having the feelings right then and there but we still gonna keep her and so y'all what happened to me over the next 72 hours was one of the most traumatizing experiences i've ever had in my life but i'm gonna talk about that next week <laughs>